like it's me Alexis Stone it feels so good to be sat in front of the camera again it's been almost a month since I had my cosmetic procedures and whilst I'm still very bruised um, not so much bruised it's more so just swelling now um, my forehead is sort of like squishy still I've had a lot of questions regarding the procedures that I've had done, so I wanted to talk about that in this video, as well as answer some of the questions that I've been getting over the last month. Now, let me just start off by saying in this video, if you are not a fan of plastic surgery, just don't watch this video. Um, I'm not promoting plastic surgery in any way. I am just talking to you guys regarding my experience and going into detail regarding my face. So, obviously I look drastically different. Well, it's weird. My friends and family, whilst it is drastic, there's still, obviously I've still got my nose, I've still got my eyes, I've still got my lips. Um, a majority of the change has just been volume that's added, so it might not translate on camera as much as it does in person, but overall my face is a lot bigger. So, I have just missed being active online. It's just been crazy. The amount of cabin fever I've got just from being at home for the last month has been driving me insane. So I thought it would be best if I just sit on camera and let you guys know that I am well. I am extremely happy with the results, even though it has not even been a month post-op. And I'm now going to answer some of the questions that you guys have been asking me. Was your want for plastic surgery a personal choice, or were you influenced by beauty standards on social media? Um, it's definitely been something I've wanted. I mean, think of all the most famous celebrities like Kim Kardashian. She's a perfect example of extreme plastic surgery. I think, obviously, my aesthetics differ from hers in the sense that mine is more face orientated instead of body, but Everyone online has had cosmetic work, whether it's um, veneers, whether it's a nose job, whether it's Botox, whether it's a BBL, whether it's a boob job. So social media definitely plays a part in how viewers perceive beauty, but it definitely wasn't something that went into consideration regarding the outcome of my preferred look. I hope you're feeling better. I wanted to ask, how do you handle the backlash or judgmental comments regarding your surgery? I'm happy for you. You are amazing and so talented. Love you. Thank you. You know what? I got to a point in my life, I'm six months into sobriety now, and I got to a point in my life where I just thought, fuck it. Before I had plastic surgery, I was called botched. So I just thought, well, fuck it. I might as well just do what I've always wanted to do. Um, regardless of if I was living my true self, I'm still going to have this narrative of me written by others and I'm still going to be called names. So, um, yes, it comes with the platform, but that is no excuse to act like a cunt online. If you don't like the way someone looks, just keep scrolling. I have never in my life felt so compelled to comment on someone I don't know saying, you are botched, you are disgusting, this or that. So I guess the way I react to negativity is just block now. Um, it's something I've always received. It's something that I plan on receiving um, throughout my life. Um, this has obviously been a life altering surgery. So uh, I'm just happy moving forward, feeling and looking more how I've always wanted to. Do you feel happy and okay with yourself after the surgery? And if someone else wasn't happy with their appearance, would you keep the option of plastic surgery open? So this is something, this is probably the biggest backlash I had was people received me talking about plastic surgery as me promoting it. Not at all. Um, if you're insecure about something and you have the funds to change it, then that's on you. I, I personally, wanted, it wasn't that I was insecure, it was I wanted to change the way I looked. And the way to achieve that was with plastic surgery. I've already shown to you guys with 150 celebrity transformations that with makeup I can transform myself. This was nothing to do with makeup. Uh, I didn't want to go to sleep and wake up looking the way I did, so I had cosmetic surgery to look the way I wanted to. 
Again, it's not for everyone, not within everyone's budget. Some people are against plastic surgery, some people are for it. I'm not here to uh, pass judgment. I am just here to showcase and share my experience. Was there a person in particular you had styled your new look on? So I did mention briefly in the previous video that I've always been attracted to people like Priscilla Presley. So that's obviously why I've had my jaw enlarged. I did say Jocelyn. I purposely didn't say Jocelyn Wildenstein just because I knew had I have said that at the time, there would have been a huge commotion. But I have always been attracted to people like Jocelyn Wildenstein, um, which is obviously why I've had my eye lift, which um, I'm still very bruised underneath my eye, so that will take more effect, I guess, as the swelling goes down. Again, it was really the lower portion of my face that I just wanted enhanced. It was the one thing that people used to always criticise me about, saying, well, your chin's too big, your jaw's too big. So, I just, and I never understood it. Like, I never understood it. I never understood it when people called Justine Wildenstein botched and Priscilla Presley botched. Like, these are multi-millionaires. They've not had surgery gone wrong. They've just achieved their idea of beauty. And I've always found that interesting and beautiful. And that, I guess, has been my motive in achieving my idea of beauty, despite whether or not other people agree with it. So, yeah, there were two or three people in reference to when I showed my plastic surgeon. Um, again, this has been months in the making. Um, I had my custom cheek implants designed. So, yeah, um, I guess that, I hope, well, I hope that answers your question. How do you choose a doctor, especially after having such a traumatic experience with the last one? So it was actually really hard finding a doctor that would do the surgery that I wanted to do. And the reason that is, is as a patient, you are a walking example of their work. I decided to go with a doctor who asked for me to sign a non-disclosure, in which basically means he didn't want me to promote him. The reason that is, is because whilst this is drastic to some people, he doesn't want all his other patients to think that this is his be-all and end-all of cosmetic surgery. So it did take a while. Um, I was obviously traumatised from the previous surgery I had, which I've spoken about loads. I'm not going to go into detail about that. Um, but that is, it's difficult. When you put your trust in a surgeon the first time and it goes so wrong, it's my best friend and flatmate. If my nose job goes wrong, I, I, said, I'm, I said, fuck it, I'm just going to come Justin Wildenstein. So... Alas, here we are. Will you say if the doctors feel you may need a revision at rhinoplasty because of the monster who botched you the first time? Yes. So a lot of people got confused. I've not had a nose job in this surgery. I did almost a year ago. I am having a revision surgery done on my nose, but I didn't have it in this round of surgery just because I wanted to go to a specialist, which I will be documenting, of course. So I've not touched my nose. I do obviously have a little bit of contouring on just to reduce the size of it and fix what the monster did to my face last time. Which of the procedures was the most important in regards to the entire look you wanted to achieve? Uh, definitely the chin. So the chin has, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's pulled down my lips in the corner. Um, so it's, it's added a very masculine trait. Um, I had a fat graft to my forehead, which a lot of people didn't understand what that was. It's basically liposuction, and then they take that fat and they inject it somewhere else. So my forehead now domes out instead of dips in. A feminine forehead, a masculine chin. The fat graft I had to the lower of my face, um, it has added texture, but again, it's only been at one month post-op. Um, this will obviously settle over the next few months. Again, it's only been at three and a half weeks. I'm so inspired and in love with your choices you've made and hopefully seeing you being more your true self will inspire me and others more. All I want to ask is, what can you expect from the future in regards to my work and where will I be heading? A lot of people have been asking if I'm going to be doing celebrity transformations. My honest answer is, I don't know. I've done 150. I've done everyone. I've done every celebrity there is to do. Um, and I've always said the best transformation I've ever done is been transforming my life. I have three major makeup collaborations coming out in 2019. So 
I guess makeup is a part of my life. I'm never going to disappear. People find it tacky when you talk about money, but I just want to enjoy the money I've made. So I invested a I invested a small portion of that into my face and from now for moving forward I'm just going to try and enjoy myself as much as possible. Um, again my goal was never to have 10 million followers on Instagram. I got to a point where it enabled me to not worry about working for the near future. I have some amazing collaborations coming out with you guys. I never thought I would be so passionate about designing and making products. So again 2019 it's going to be a really fun year for me. I'm going to be able to meet all of you guys. You guys are going to be able to meet me. Um, and you're going to be able to enjoy some really beautiful products. How did this take a toll on your mental health? Obviously, your experience at the clinic centre was traumatic. Did that affect your willingness or did you feel uneasy trusting someone else? Any plastic surgery you have takes a huge toll on your mental health. Um, the first week that I spent in the hospital, luckily I went with my assistant, Sarah. So... I wasn't on my own this trip. Um, it wasn't as painful, actually, because I didn't have much bone work done. The only bone work I had done was attaching little rivets to my skull, which the implants are secured to, just to stop my cheek basically from moving around. Um, and the same with my chin. Other than the swelling, there really wasn't much pain. But no, I wasn't so much nervous. Um, my last experience was definitely a lesson learned. Um, and I did my research going into this surgery. Again, I am very happy with the results. Um, despite, I know there are going to be some people out there that think I look like a monster. Again, I've gone past the point of caring at that point. Uh, before I had plastic surgery, people called me a monster. After I got plastic surgery, people are going to call me a monster. Uh, you can't reason with stupidity, so that's on them, not me. Did you ever consider plastic surgery when you were younger, like a teenager, or is it something you wanted only after becoming an adult? And where do you get the strength to ignore hateful comments about you because of your plastic surgery? Again, I've received hate online for years. It's honestly, you name it, I've heard it. People have said I look like something out of Whoville. People said I look like Jocelyn Wildenstein. I've always said that it's sad that I have to normalise other people's cruel behaviour because I have a platform and they go, they carry on with their life trolling people and putting people down on the way they look. What has been the hardest part of your surgery, physically or emotionally? Honestly, just being away from being able to make content. Creativity for me has always been what's driven me and got me through the hardest times of my life. So having a month off sounds like bliss to anyone, but I'm so used to doing something, whether it's playing with makeup or doing celebrity transformations. So um, the hardest part is just being not being able to do much. And for the first two weeks, I obviously didn't leave the house. And then I started going out wearing just a little face net and my sunglasses, um, just because I was just so sick of being at home. So I guess just not having anything to do was the hardest part for me personally. Obviously you've done this for yourself and you don't want need anyone else's opinion, but have you had to deal with any close friends or family disagreeing with your decisions or your personal vision of beauty? Um, my close friends completely understand. Um, there's always concern whenever you go on to the operating table. Um, there are risks with plastic surgery. Um, the only thing that I'm not concerned about, but that is obviously texture just from where my fat graft has been and the tightness. So. Um, it's not that it's made me look older, it's just, I'm just waiting for the, sort of, I'm just waiting for it to iron out a little bit more. Do my family support it? Yeah, uh, they're worried about me, but I'm an adult. I love my parents, but, um, it's my life, my face. Do you feel that people are going to be mean about your look when you finally see the final transformation? Uh, yes. Um, I expect there to be lots of... Um, nonsense um, and commotion but again I've got to the point in my life where I just don't really care um, I can't live my life based on ifs, whats and buts by other people um, I knew full well going into this there was going to be um, a backlash in regards to my cosmetic choices so troll me when did you realise that you weren't happy with your natural born face and what do you think may have triggered these feelings? Um, I was never uncomfortable in my natural body. I was 
and I look back at photos and I recognise I was an attractive gay guy and I still am a gay guy, I'm not transitioning in terms of gender. There has been a transition obviously in the way I look. I just have always believed in change and the same way that we upgrade our iPhones, this, work, th this phone works perfectly fine. It's not broken. I don't think it's ugly, but when the new iPhone comes out, I'm still gonna go and upgrade it. So I think people have this perceived idea that you can only have plastic surgery if you are unattractive. That was never the case for me. I just wanted to change the way I looked. A quote from Pete Burns' biography, and it was, um, this had nothing to do with vanity. This had everything to do with sanity. And that was very much where I was at. I was doing these transformations, I was bored of what I saw in the mirror, so I thought, fuck it, let me design myself a new face. So I did. What was the total cost of all of the procedures? So I'm not going to say exactly how much it was, but it was in the tens of thousands. Again, I did go abroad. Um, no doctor in the UK would even come near my face. Um, whenever I showed them photos or digital markups of what I wanted, they literally laughed. Um, so it was hard finding a doctor. So I'm going to leave the video here for now. Um, I'm going to be filming lots of other videos. I'm now back. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the future. Um, I'm going to leave this video for you guys to digest, take in. Um, I'm sure to a lot of people it will be a huge difference and a shock to some, but I just want to let you know that I'm happy. I'm back. I'm so happy with what I see in the mirror. It's nice. Um, it's a good feeling. So I just want to thank you all for the continual love and support. I have been seeing all your sweet messages whilst I've been recovering. I love you all. And until next time, stay safe and I shall see you very soon.